okay? Which is what cellular respiration is looking at is ATP production, what we call adenosine triphosphate. And that's the actual energy that we're going to be using. Um, ATP, the way that we actually get the energy out of that is we go to ADP plus a P. Now, all ATP is is adenosine with three phosphates attached to it. And when we go from three to two, so when we take this last P off, this process releases energy. That release of energy is the thing that allows us to do all of the things that we like to do. Run, jump, chew gum, move a pencil, right? Flip your hair, breathe at night while you're sleeping. All of these things require energy and you're getting unlimited sources of it. But all we're doing is we're taking a phosphate and we're breaking it off. So we make a di, so here's our two phosphates, our diphosphate and we have a free phosphate at the end. So we talk about making energy, that's actually what we're making, an ATP, and we use it by breaking a phosphate off to release the energy. So far, so good. Have I lost anybody yet? Yeah. Who did I lose and where did I lose you? Where did I lose you? Um, when you like, started from the top again with the ATP. So cellular respiration makes ATP. <laughs> And ATP is our energy source. We've talked about ATP many of times, right? We keep using this term ATP, but now we're going to figure out how do we actually make it. What ATP is called adenosine triphosphate. So it's this. This is, a, this is an adenine molecule with three phosphates attached to it. There's our triphosphate. Now what happens is that when we actually use the ATP, all we're doing is we break off our last phosphate. What does the first one of the electron. Thank you, Devin. But in the old, that it looked like an O. It looks like I know, Devin, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, know, I know, it's hard. So, our three, Derek, right? We have three phosphates. All we're doing is we take this third phosphate, we break it off. In the process of breaking this phosphate off, the bond holding it together, that releases energy. So when we talk about going from ATP to ADP, di, plus a phosphate, there's our phosphate that becomes free, that's our free phosphate, this is what gives us the energy. So when we actually use the ATP, all we're doing is we're breaking off a phosphate and that releases the energy for us to do things with. So now we're going to talk about how do we make the ATP, that's what we're doing today in our lectures, how do we make the ATP. So far, so are you better now? Yeah. Did I lose anybody else? The pencil tip is too small. Do you need a new pencil? Devin? I don't know. Can I get you a new pencil? Do you need one that's got a harder tip on it? How's that one? Does that one work for you? There's no eraser on it. There you go. That doesn't work out with the okay? Here we go. Now we're going to start off here with glycolysis. Glycolysis is going to be found, and I'm going to draw something here. Uh, we're going to draw this. This line that I've drawn here is the mitochondria membrane. So in other words, glycolysis is going to be taking place out of the cytoplasm. Right. So this is happening for all cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells alike. Plant and animal cells alike are going through this process. Now this process, uh, glycolysis, is the oldest part of cellular respiration. It doesn't produce a lot of ATP. But we're going to kind of go through this process in general and see where this goes. I'm going to just break this down into some really simple parts. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to start with a molecule of glucose. Oh, so I spell it right, doesn't it? Kevin? Glucose. Now, it starts with glucose and it's going to end, end 
just going to show you this process. It's going to end with two pyruvates. P Y R U V A T. Two pyruvates. And each pyruvate is a three carbon chain. All we've done now is we've taken glucose, which is C6, H12, O6. So I have, I'm starting with a six carbon molecule. I'm ending the one? with two, two, six, two, three carbon chains, or six carbons. What so is that one after the two? Carbon. Carbon. Next to it. Pyruvate. <coughs> P-Y-R-U-V-A-T. Um, too fat. I know. Why don't you make a recording of it then? Come on. I'm sorry. Spell it out slower. It's a hard one today, Debbie. I agree. So we're starting with a uh, six carbon chain and we're breaking it down into two three carbon chains. I give up on that. Which is just going to be then six carbon. So all we're doing is just rearranging the molecules. Now, along the way, what we need to do is we're going to put in two ATP. This ATP is going to start the process of changing our glucose molecules. So we invest two molecules of ATP. That comes out then on the back side as ADP plus P, right? So basically we're putting energy into the system. So this goes in. Out. So we're putting energy into the system. What also goes into the system is what we call an NAD plus. That comes in, there's two of those, and what comes out is two NADHs. These things are important for us, and the fact that this becomes an electron carrier. And then NADH is an electron carrier or an energy carrier. That energy and those electrons are going to be used later on to make the bulk of our ATP. And what we call the electron transport chain. Right? So if this is an electron carrier, it's going to carry it to the electron transport chain where we make the bulk of our ATP. Now these things are going to be important for us. We actually use these NADHs a fair amount because they're going to make the bulk of our ATP. So it's an important thing for us. The other thing that comes out of this process before the very end of this would be four ATP. So in the process of converting glucose, C6H12O6, into two three carbon chains, we call pyruvate, we're going to put some energy in, we're going to get out two electron carriers, we're going to get out four ATP, which means in the process that glycolysis, 